book of Job, chapter 38, verse 1. I'd mentioned to you during the song, Blessed Be Your Name. Did not know the band was doing that song. Just feel like it's a God thing today all the way around. Some things I'll say today, I've said to you before, because to say the same thing to you again is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. That's a scripture that Paul, the apostle, said. And I like that. He said, I've got to repeat things at times. I found that years ago I preached stuff that I had not lived. Hmm. When you're a pastor and you got to preach a couple hundred times a year, you're going to preach stuff you ain't lived. You're just preaching the Bible. Pastor Joseph, you're just preaching the Bible. And then you stay at it long enough that all of a sudden now you're living what you've preached. And you go back and you preach it again because this got a whole new flavor to it. Because now you've lived it. And that's amazing as you walk through life. The book of Job says this, and that near the end of the book, Job said, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, out of the hurricane, out of the tornadoes. And he said, Who is this who darkens counsel my words without knowledge? Speaking about the knothead religious friends that Job had. Who are these knuckleheads? He said, Now prepare yourself like a man. When God says, hey, act like a man, step up, bow your back, bend your knees, use your arms, act like a man. When God says that to you, you better pay attention. And Job had just gone through some very difficult things. God said, it's time for you to act like a man. Step up, boy. I will question you, and you're going to answer me. When God says, I'm going to question you, now you're going to answer him. So today's message is simply when God questioned me. And God has questioned me, but I'm going to tell you this. God is questioning you. Through the storm we just went through 13 days ago, God is questioning you. How you handled it, what you went through it. I believe God has questioned all of us from it. How we've helped our neighbors. Are we thankful for the conveniences we've taken for granted? You just took it for granted. Electricity. I mean, when my electricity came back on, I'd lost fans, I'd lost washer and dryer, I'd I lost uh, an air conditioning, and all of a sudden, I was starting to question. You know, look what I've gone through here. I mean, this, this is something. So, the conveniences we've taken, water, hmm, clean clothes. I wore the same pair of britches five days. Turned my drawers around four times. <laughs> At least I had some. Josh didn't even have them. <laughs> Thank God for a generator. Yes. Gasoline. The pastor bring me 55 gallons of gas. It was gold, man. Never had to leave the property for six days. I believe God's questioning, will we endure? Will we persevere? Will we stick it out for his glory? Will we answer the question? I was asked by a friend who called me from Oregon this week. Uh, I mean, I love this guy. His name's Matt Studer, and he gave me a call, went to college with him. Scary guy, big guy. I used to go witnessing with him downtown San Antonio. I would do the talking, and Matt would do the intimidating. <laughs> I was never scared with Matt around. He was, just, he was always this big figure that was, you were afraid. I, I mean, I know he's a Bible college student, but this guy was, a, a, he was one of these guys that eat raw liver. He just is a monster of a fella. Still that way. Still, you remember Matt, Katie? I got video, you won't uh, right, uh, ride a motorcycle with Matt. And uh, he called me, he said, man, what's happened to y'all? He said, every time I look at Facebook, y'all got a storm, a flood, a hurricane, some, something's going on down there. What, is God mad at y'all? And I said, no, he just knows we can handle it. Yeah. Other folk can't handle what we can handle. I had a, a pool salesman come by, and he, and he said, talk to me. He walked over to me, uh, and he said, sir, can I, are you the pastor? I was, on the, I was on the mower. He said, you the pastor? I said, yes, sir. He said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, go ahead. He said, did God send the hurricane? I said, no. He said, did Satan send the hurricane? I said, no. He said, well, where did it come from? I said, climate change. <laughs> I said, don't you know 
that when Noah got in the ark and the boys looked at, at his daddy and they had never seen rain before and it started falling and they looked at Noah and said, where did this flood come from? Noah said, climate change. Then Elijah, he said, it'll never rain again for three years. We'll never see rain. One year, two years, three years had passed, 12, 24, 36 months. Somebody looked at Elijah and said, Elijah, what's going on around here? Elijah said, Climate change. The earth is alive. It's never stopped changing. It's always, you didn't cause it to change. God called, it's the seasons that we go through. It's always going to be changing. Can I get an amen? amen? So we had a change. We had a shift in the atmosphere. That hurricane shifted over into our place. It didn't mean that God was mad at us. Was God mad at Job? Was God mad at, at the apostle Paul? No. But they went through difficulties. They went through hard times. And God does that in our lives for a reason. Hurricanes and whirlwinds and storms create a sense of urgency. They call for people to prepare for radical change. Hurricanes represent trouble and adversity, which God often uses to scatter and dispossess those who oppose his plan and to gather and reposition his people. Some people get repositioned after a big storm. They, they move or shift or something happens in their life. Others stay put. Trouble has built within it a blessing for all who will deal with it honestly. Trouble can surely reveal ourselves quite painfully and quickly. To say the least, trouble has a way of making us reach beyond our small, imposed limitations and really allows, us, uh, allows for the accomplishment of so much more. Difficulty is not a dirty word. And it's been difficult the last two weeks. It's, it's caused changes in our life. But we are made strong by what we are forced to face, not by what we have managed to sidestep and avoid. Trouble has within itself a challenge we all need to propel us into a higher level and to tap into our potential. It's been laying dormant, but all of a sudden now potential. I mentioned my son a while ago. I had no idea that young man could be a lumberjack, but he jumped right into it. Amen. I had no idea that Josh could drive a tractor. Still can't. It'll take a while, but he'll get it down, won't he? Just, get, just give him time. Amen. So, so we, we don't know how these things are going to work. But, but I can tell you, he has always managed to put his people into some tough situations. Yet he always brings them out. May I add much better. Various trials and tests are never sent to us so we can crash and fail. God never means for us to fail, amen, but rather to educate us about the weak areas of our lives. These trials reveal the power of God that is available for the asking. You have not because you didn't ask. God forces us to come to the end of ourselves so we can be cast upon him. I have wept this week. I have laughed this week. I have sweated this week. My face shows the, the, the burns of the sun. My arms are, are, are burnt up. I have to keep sure. I mean, Kenny, I don't know what else to do but to keep pressing on until we get through it. But I won't stop until we get through it. We're humbled and we're made pure and wiser. And often, as I've read the various stories of the Scripture, I have been impacted to a better view and understanding of life. I'm so glad for a man named Job and David and Daniel and Moses and Abraham. I've received so much again and again from the recorded events of their lives through the Scripture. I therefore will accept trouble by the hand of God. If it's trouble that I get, I'll handle trouble. When I was in college, a professor of ours would quote this often. He said, pressed out of measure and pressed to all length. Pressed so intensely it seems beyond strength. Pressed in the body and pressed in the soul. Pressed in the mind till the dark surges roll. Pressure by foes and pressure by friends. Pressure on pressure till life nearly ends. Life has its pressure. Amen. But that pressure reveals who we are. Matthew 5, 43 says, You have heard that it has been said, Love your neighbor. Hate your enemy. But I'm going to tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. It rains on everyone. Everybody gets wet. Amen. John 16, 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. We're going to have trouble. Everybody say trouble. trouble. Mm -hmm. Travis Tritt said it best. 
here come T-R-O-U-B-L-E. Amen. And it was a woman. So let's get back over to the scripture here. <laughs> People are not great because they never face opposition, but because they overcame it. It's true of families, churches, businesses, relationships. And there's a fine line between greatness and maintenance. We can bump along, okay, until hardships come. And then it determines whether we're going to get better or we're going to get bitter. It's going to be in these challenging times that you and I rise above or we fall below. Amen. Proverbs 12, 13 says, The wicked is stared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. You know, social media exposed so many things in our lives as we posted, as we wrote, as we, and I saw so many overcomers. And then I saw others that have been with me a long time that struggled through this. And I said, Lord, help people understand that, that you speak to us through the whirlwind. You're always talking to us through trouble. You're always dealing with us and helping us out through this. The Amplified Bible says the wicked is dangerously snared by the transgression of their lips. Watch what you say. You overcome by the words of your mouth. Your tongue is a dipstick to your heart. Amen. I pull your, I hear your tongue talk. I know what's going on in your heart. So be careful what you say when trouble comes. Trouble defined as tightness, affliction, adversity, narrow or cramped. We've gone through these times. When life changes quickly, a loss of a job, passing of a loved one, a friendship dissolved, Hurricane Ike and Tornado uh, uh, Tina. <laughs> Some of you will get that. It happens on those who love God and those who dis. Buys him. Trouble, trouble, turbulence. Turbulence. If you're in a plane and it starts doing that bucking situation, that's turbulence. Amen. It's to agitate mentally, spiritually, to worry, disturb, to put into a confused motion or to cause inconvenience. Trouble comes in all shapes, sizes, big and small. Turbulence, wild commotion, irregular atmospheric motion, especially when characterized by up and down currents. Again, last night I went to see the show twisters and i'm reminded atmospheric motion takes places all over seem like it really take place in oklahoma mm, glad i'm in texas somebody said man i, I hate you guys y'all get to all them hurricanes i said i'll take one hurricane over all them little tornadoes y'all keep getting up around there <laughs> I mean, just give me one good slap <laughs> listen I have shared this with you before, and I want you to write it down. I want you to take it into your heart. I want you to catch this. How do you mature? How do you grow? How do you learn from the wind? Turbulence reveals the nature of my faith, the nature of your faith. Amen. Is your faith strong or is it weak? The nature of your faith is so The strength of your commitment. Amen. Are you willing to give up? Are you going to stick? Stickability is one of the greatest sticks you can have. To stick to something, man, to stay with it. Or you want to give up easy. The level of my maturity. Are you an infant, adolescent, teen, or adult? You've been serving God 30 years and you still got to have a milk bottle? Ain't you ready for some meat yet? Amen. Are you tired of whining all the time? You need cheese with that, Wisconsin? Amen. The level of your maturity. Or have you grown? We all start out as infants. We all go into adolescence, but eventually we've got to mature in this. Can I get an amen? Yes. Amen. The healthiness of my attitude. Do I have the right attitude to go through this? Is my nose up? Is it down or is it level? Am I able to, to maintain a right attitude through all of this? And then the measure of my teachability. What did I learn? Have I learned anything through this? Every storm that I've been through, I refuse to go through it without learning something. I got to learn something through this thing. I got to pick up on something through this. What I know in all types of trouble, remember, everybody gets wet. Say it with me. Everybody gets wet. Amen. It just happens. Amen. It's going to rain on the just in there. Some because they're out of God's will. Sometimes they're in God's will. But Jesus does for us in the storms of life. And I'm just going to read this to you, and then we'll break it down. Matthew 14. Jesus has already fed the multitudes with fish and bread. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him on the other side. Now, when you're reading Matthew 14, you're going to realize this. When Jesus fed them bread and fish, they wanted to make him king. We will want to make anyone king who promises us provision. Beware of politics. Every four years, two years, whatever. Because politicians will promise you no taxes. They will promise you this, that, and the other. And bless their heart, when they get to the White House, they often lie. Amen. Just going to leave it right there. I'm really tired of it. But it's just our lives. 
So they wanted to make Jesus a king on the basis of provision. Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, this is not why I came. I came for your salvation, not for your physical needs here. So Jesus pushes them away, and then he puts the disciples into a boat, and then he tells them to go to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself alone to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. I want you to pick that up. He's alone. So many times in life, you're going to find yourself alone. And when you get that way, pray. The boat was already a considerable distance from land. It was being beat up by the waves because of the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, in other words, it's not light yet, Jesus went out to them. We believe it's somewhere around 3 a.m., walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, don't be afraid. Take courage. It's I. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. He said, then Peter got down, catch this, down out of the boat. It's not a Piro. It's not a little John boat. It's a big boat. So he had to climb over the side and go down the side of the boat. And he walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Shortest prayer in the Bible, Lord, save me. The other day I was praying at a funeral. I said, Lord, give peace. Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes there's not time for a long prayer. Some people preach sermons in their prayers. Uh, Just tell God what you need in your prayer. The urgency will speak normally a fewer words. Lord, save me. He was sinking. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. So the wind was up while Jesus, he's walking on the water and the wind's up. Why? Because it didn't bother him didn't affect him. He's walking on the waves. If the wind's up, the waves are up. So he's walking. There, Every now and then, you'd look and you'd see him on top of a wave. And then all of a sudden, you'd just see his head. And then he'd be on top of the wave, and then you'd see his head. He'd be on top of the wave. See, some of y'all never thought of this stuff. (laughs) Then he'd see his head. See, he's on top of the wave, and they see his head. And then they got scared, and they started screaming, Ah! It's a ghost. And Jesus said, hey, it's me. Who else do you know walks on water? Amen. They're scared. Now, I can preach, you know, months on this. Y'all have heard me preach on wave walkers. Amen. I, I, I just, I love this message. But that's not where I'm going. It's, oh, I want to so bad. Control yourself, preach. Help it. After he had... What, why, y'all scripture, y'all need to be moving that scripture along there. I'm way ahead of y'all. <laughs> Amen. And when they had climbed into, oh, I said, y'all don't got that. And then they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, you truly are the son of God. I never seen nothing like this. The beauty of the whole story to me is that Jesus had Peter walk on the water. And then he sank, he got back up and he walked on the water twice. And then the winds died down. That means Peter is to be two heads. Uh-huh. Walking. Okay. And then when I got in the boat, I hear my knees, my knees are popping. <laughs> Sound like a goat chewing aluminum foil. <laughs> Amen. So they come up on it. And then they get up in the boat. The wind dies. So the question is this. In the storms of life, what did he do for you last night? week, 12 days ago, I stood in the middle of the field out on the property in the middle of the eye of the storm as it came through, and I heard the cracking of trees all around me and limbs flying, and I had no fear because I knew he was with me, and I just stood out there and got back in the house, and the pine tree fell right in front of my window, and I thought, my goodness, Pat Pat and Cindy came out and said, Pat! Your tree fell right in front of you. I said, I know. <laughs> I was right here. I saw it. 
Amen. And then Pat and I drove through the property. And by the time we came back, a pine tree had done fallen right in the road, right where we just drove under. And he was with us. And I thought, in the darkest hour, in the darkest hour, he prays for us. Verse 23. After he dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside and he prayed. Who's he praying? He's praying for those 12 men. Amen. That's in that boat. He's lifting them up. God, help them understand that I'm sending them to the other side, but they're not going to make it without me. You're not going to make it without me. He's going to send you somewhere, but you're not going to make it without me. Then he comes to them, verse 24, 25, in the fourth watch, shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. In the darkest hour, a little before morning, he comes to us victorious over our greatest fear. Your greatest fear. Dark, darkness, I've been out in the seas where there was just darkness all around. And all I saw was the stars. There's no lights illuminating from cities or, or towns. It's just darkness. And then the waves crashing over you and hitting you. The taste of the salt. Amen. All these things taking place. He walks out on your darkest fear. The thing that you're most afraid of. He's there with you. He ministers to us. He said, it's his words, it's I, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pick up your Bible in the darkest of times and find a word and hug it. Hold it and say, God, that's my word. I'm holding on to this word right now in this storm. I'm not going to let this thing go. Amen. And then he ministers to us. It is I, don't be afraid. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said. They cried immediately. And I love the word immediately. Jesus said, take courage. Amen. He didn't let them ponder on it. I want you to take courage. It's I, don't be afraid. And he challenges us in our trouble. He challenges you. He's always going to bid you to come. He, he's always pulling you into a place of risk. He's always saying, you've got to step out of the boat. He wouldn't, that word come could have been for, all, for Matthew. It could have been for John. It could have been for James. But it was Peter that stepped up and said, if it's you, bid me come. And he said, it's me. Come on. And Peter got down out of the boat. And I often think to myself, sometimes you want to get out of the boat because inside that boat is pessimism, negative, whining. <sighs> Some of you got stuck in the house with relatives this week. <laughs> you couldn't wait to get out of the boat. You, you were waiting on Jesus to call you. Get on out of the boat, man. Oh, God, please. I didn't expect the family to move in with me because we the only ones with a generator. <laughs> I, I think sometimes Peter got out of that boat just for, just for his own, uh, keep his head right. Amen. Manage life. Amen. So he gets down. The blessing of trouble gave Peter a green light to walk on that water. Listen, when discouragement or desperation comes your way, you, you got to remember it's all through Scripture. People have all gone through it. I, I watched a little show a while back called Foods That Built America and told about an old man that retired and didn't have enough to live on. He retired, didn't have enough to live on. So he thought he'll do I'll do what I know to do. I know how to make chicken. So he set out to sell his chicken and was turned down 1,009 times before someone bought his recipe. His name was Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Sometimes difficulty forces us to get a new recipe. Can I get an amen? Don't just get by by making a living. Have a destiny. Joseph rose up out of a pit to rule the land. After a storm, things will never be the same again. They could get better. What's your excuse? Rain, wind, inconvenience. So what do you do, Pastor? Do something. Everybody say, do something. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. Do something. In other words, do what you can do. So, sometimes we try to hide behind our faith as an excuse to do nothing. Amen. You do what you can do. Uh, for us, it's cutting trees. It's gathering limbs. It's, it's, it's working what we can do. What can we do? Let God do what he can do. But don't you try to do what God only can do. Amen. And don't you expect God to do what you're supposed to do. It's, it's only when you let the enemy paralyze you that you are become unable to overcome your problem. Amen. God has given you all that you need to overcome trials. You're built for it. God built us for this. We didn't just, you know, now I, I don't blame it on Pastor Joseph, but I didn't have no trouble until he showed up. <laughs> He'd been with me nine years now. For, for the last 10 years, I think I counted four or five little floods, two or three big floods, several hurricanes. Miss Linda, 
He said, help us. God knew I was going to have trouble. So he said, I'm going to send you a big, strong, hairy dude. <laughs> Just let me believe that. <laughs> You're built for it. Your faith is forged. Pastor Joe, Josh, your faith is forged for it. I live for it. Sometimes I invite it. Come on, trouble. Hit me with your best shot. Hey Amen. I'm 63, and I'm still good looking. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. You can hear me. Many of us, when things improve, we get what is called survivor's guilt. We had electricity. We had AC. We had gasoline. Other people didn't have it. And then we start feeling bad. We don't even tell nobody. We got electricity three hours after the storm. And we had to wait 10 days. And there's still people without it. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, we get soft, don't we? You're harder on yourself than anyone else. You begin to get into a mentality, I have to make this work at all costs. Pretty soon the enemy has you over there doing things that are not right. But now the ends start justifying the means. God didn't create you to beat yourself down. Amen. Or allow other people to do it. Everyone must learn while they're wet. Stop saying, why me? Stop saying that. Encourage yourself in the Lord. David did. People went out. When I got that phone call, they said, Pastor, what's going on down there? You guys are always getting it. it look, it's all southeast Texas. It wasn't Pastor Jerry and the little country churches. Amen. It was all of us. We all went through it. Can I get an Amen. When you go through it, have a friend, have a confidant, have somebody you can share with. There are no lone rangers in God's kingdom. Amen. I've leaned hard on my staff. Amen. I had to. I had, I had to look for people to lean to, to talk to. Society says if you're strong, you don't need anyone else. Fooey, I get wet, forgive me. I pray if I get wet, you get wet with me. I don't want to be wet by myself. Amen. I want us all to get wet together. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 1, a man separates himself and defiles all sound judgment. Have a friend. Have somebody you can talk to. James 5, 16, confess your faults to one another. Amen. And pray for each other. Confess your faults. Don't confess your sins. Confess your sins to God. Confess your faults to others. I've, I confess my faults. My faults are simply I fall all the time. That's one of my faults. I can seem to stumble. Amen. And I need help getting back up and pressing on. I get weak. I get tired. I have faults. Every now and then I get angry. And I say things I shouldn't say. I get mad. But it normally ain't toward y'all. I like y'all. <laughs> so we need the body of Christ. No matter how strong your arm is, it does no good if it's not connected to the body. It's good for nothing. Church... Church, I, and this is what I saw people crying for help all over social media. I've known these people. They were in church years ago, but they stepped away. Something, they got church hurt. Heard the word, church hurt. Why, why ain't you in church? I got hurt in church. You got hurt at the mall? Did you quit going to the mall? You got hurt? You got hurt at the hospital? Did you get hospital hurt? You don't go to doctors no more? Hey, Amen. Did you get veterinarian hurt? You don't go to the vet no more? Why do people use church hurt as an excuse, but they don't use mall hurt, hospital hurt, vet hurt, any other hurt? But yeah, I got Exxon convenience store hurt. I ain't, going, I ain't getting gas no more. I'll, I refuse to buy gas anymore. So I got hurt at the gas station. <laughs> Are you hearing the preacher? Quit using excuses to stay out. We need the body. I saw people crying for help, and I thought, if you were still connected to the body, you'd have help. But you, you dislocated yourself. You pushed yourself out of this thing. Keep focused and committed to God's work and your destiny. Don't let the wind rob your future. Storms come, and they go. This will soon be a memory. Trouble forces you to focus if you are to survive. Isaiah 26, 3, you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. You'll keep him in perfect peace. God will preserve you in hard times. Amen. Hard times if you keep your mind on him rather than the problem. Remember, the enemy will work all things to evil for those who will allow him to. 
God works all things for the good. Your enemy works all things for the bad. 2 Corinthians tells you, bring every thought, every thought into captivity. When you master this process, your problem will no longer be able to change your course. Paul said, I'm going to Rome. Paul said, I'm going to Rome. I got to go preach in Rome. They said, yes, you are. And they handcuffed him in chains. They put him on a ship. The ship wrecked. He got bit by a snake. Everything seemed to happen to him. Sometimes you make up your mind to go somewhere and difficulties are going to hit. Trouble's going to come your way. Number five, nothing happens as fast as you want it to. Pastor, when y'all going to get that? When y'all going to get everything cleaned up? Give us about six months. Yeah. Yeah, about in, right into hunting season. I'm going to hide behind some of them fallen trees. Praise the Lord. We want it yesterday. Hebrews 6, 12. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Don't buckle under problems. Rise above them with these principles. What are the principles? Amen. The nature of your faith, the strength of your commitment, the level of your maturity, the healthiness of your attitude, the measure of my teachability. Last week, I left you with one statement on resiliency. It's the ability to bounce back. Believing no matter the trouble or turbulence, I'm going to bounce back. Resiliency. Micah 7, 8. Last scripture. Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I've fallen, I will rise. Though things have been tore up, I'm going to get it back. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Amen. Go ahead, McKenna.
Break it down just a little bit, guys. Break it down just a little bit. Thank you. Keep playing. I don't know exactly how to end this, but this is in my heart. He has good plans for you. And some of you have to have a lot. you got to ask God for wisdom about where you're heading. Uh, Pastor Joseph sent me a message last night that, that just really burdened me. And I, I, so, and I know some of you may have a hard time doing this or reaching for this. But I'm going to send this band down into a hospital after today's services. And I believe, according to the scripture in the book of Acts, that Paul the Apostle would, would send out uh, handkerchiefs. How many's ever received a handkerchief from me? Okay. You know why I do it? I pray over it and I hand it to you, and, I'm, and I want you to hold it. There's no power in this, but it's saying that I believe in God. A little young couple I married, I don't know, about a year ago, uh, Ashley and Cameron, out at the other campus, Ashley Ford. What's Cameron's last name? Nah, I just it skipped my mind. I have it. But, but Cameron's a big, strong guy. He's put in a hospital this week. They said he had COVID. Well, they diagnosed him with acute myeloid leukemia. And he's, I mean, he's probably 30, maybe. Not even a good-looking young man. I mean, I mean, just a beautiful couple. My heart is, because the same thing my friend Pastor Rick's got. And I said, God, okay. Now, now, you know, I, I got some sticks to pick up. I got some stumps to move. But I got a friend's got a bikini. And if you would, I'm going to walk down this aisle, and I want you, those that would, to step out in the aisle, and I want you to touch this bandana. And I want you to pray as, as you touch it. Just say the name Cameron. And we'll send this to him and believe God for his healing. That God will touch him in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you know, listen, I'm going down the aisle. I'm coming back up this aisle. I'm going to go down that aisle. So you don't have to all try to rush out in the middle. All right? You follow me? Preacher can move. Y'all ain't got to all move. But, but so I'm going to go down this aisle. I'm coming back up that aisle. I'm going to go back down that aisle. Amen. I don't care what uh, live stream. If you're live stream, you just stretch your hand out this way. But we're going to believe God for this man. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. And listen, you celebrate other people's victories and miracles till your miracle gets in. That's how you live life. You don't get bitter because somebody else got healed and you didn't. I prayed for people and they got well and I still limp. Are you hearing me? And that's okay. I'm all right with it. I'm just going to keep believing God for miracles. Amen. I went through this whole last one. I have never had COVID. Never had a shot. Never had it. I ain't against y'all getting shots. I ain't against Joe Biden getting three shots and still getting it four times. You know, I, I don't know how this, but it's a mess out there. But I'm going to keep believing God. Amen. People's lives and miracles. Brian, for you getting a new home. We'll believe God for it. Amen. It, it, it is starting over. You're young enough to start over. I'm still young enough to start over. I started over several times. Amen. You start over ain't that bad. Just do it. So let's pray. If, you, if you'd like to step out now, I'll touch this as I walk by and just say the name Cam. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name, that you're going to touch Cameron in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for healing, blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. I believe it's going to happen. I can see it happening now. I can see you resurrecting that young man out of that bed. I can see his wife smiling. God, is believing you for the best. You heal people in this house of cancer. You touch their lives. You take your diabetes away from God in Jesus' name. I thank you. His name is God, we thank you that you want to touch and heal this young man. Bless him in Jesus' name. Take that blood disease away. We bring him cancer in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, for touching cancer in Jesus' name. God, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it's going to happen. Jesus, 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 Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Come on, keep singing. Sing that song. He has great plans.
Amen. Come on, give him praise. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What David said, goodness and mercy have always been two angels. And I've, I've said, God, send goodness and mercy after Katie, after Mandy, after Josiah, after Judah, after Jill. I prayed for goodness and mercy to follow them. Pray goodness and mercy stays with your family. Brand new grandparents, the Balkies. Got a little girl named Jordan. Come on, Jesus. Gonna change your life. How about that? Been waiting on that. Oh my God. Do you have any idea what this is gonna cost you? Tommy, I made my whole life. Y'all sit down. Oh my goodness. It's a miracle. Children are such miracles. Many of you were unable to give last week. I know this week I'm asking you to step up, take care of the ministries, the house. Honor God. You know, giving is about just honoring God. Be a cheerful giver. You can give online, holywild.net slash give. I've been a tither for over 40 years. I believe in it. I believe Jesus was a tither. Just, you know, I know the government's going to take from you. My giving is to tell God how much I appreciate Him and love Him. And He's been so faithful to me. Shoot, I even threw a raffle out there just for fun and won a motorcycle. That's why I don't do raffles that much. I can't handle all that stuff. But here's what I do know. If God can get it through you, He can get it to you. How many times had somebody a couple years ago said, Pastor, you want my Harley? I said, I got one, but if you'll give it to me, I'll make sure I give it to somebody who'll use it. He gave it to me. I gave it to Pastor Joseph. He learned to ride. And Pastor Joseph got another one, and then gave that one to his daddy. That's how this works. Amen. So our servant leaders will come up. You have had plenty of time to write your time check, your offering. Sometimes I say this in my sleep because I believe it. And as we give today, we believe in God. For jobs, more money, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to